Hi, I'm Kelly Gunther and this is our blog. I'm the creative director of Gunther Group. We are a little boutique agency based in Seattle and I try to give tips and advice for, uh, lately it's been on video related stuff. Our second blog was actually a written blog talking about the story and you can find that on our website. But, um, but the last few have been based on video devices that we use um, and kind of tips and tricks with them. Today actually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be doing a um, uh, basically a review and uh, some how-to's with the Polar Pro Cinema Series, the ND4, ND8, and the ND16 kit. Um, some of the limitations and some of the good and the bad about them. Um, so, what we did with our first flight is we did it right here on the roof of Gunther Group and we flew it up on a bright, beautiful day in the afternoon with a lot of full sun, just like this, to give you an idea. This first image video that you're looking at is a full auto everything. So it's got auto white balance, it's got everything going on, and uh, the shutter speed was rather high. The, the shutter speed actually was 2400, you know, everything was full auto. And I have to say, of the three drones we've owned, and we've owned uh, the Phantom 2, we've had a 3DR Solo, which we really had issues with, and now the Mavic, which has been really great. The auto everything is the best we've ever seen on any drone we've owned. You can see that basically this footage is, it's got a lot of detail in the background. You can easily make out the mountains in the distance. Um, obviously it's, it's, it's not bad at all. Now, what we did is, the very next thing we did is we threw on the ND4, the lowest of the ND4s in our pack. We set the ISO to 100, but the lowest we could set the shutter before the shutter speed, before it blew out, was 400. So this is what you're looking at. So looking at here, taking off, it's a very similar look. It's maybe a little richer. It's definitely a bit brighter than full auto, but you're not really seeing a lot of cinematic look in the settings at 400 shutter speed. All right, so the next thing we did is we took it off and we put on the ND16. And this footage you're gonna see of flying off the deck uh, minutes later was the ND16. Now the ND16, uh, you're going to be beginning to see a darker picture. The horizon details appear to me to be more distinct. And you'll also notice it's a little smudgy in areas. So it's a little bit, you know, selective focus. And that's operator error. One thing to know about the um, Polar Pro cinema filters or any of these filters that fit onto the Mavics, is you've got to seed them just right. <clears throat> so ours probably was just <clears throat> not seated completely perfectly. And because it wasn't seated completely perfectly, you'll get <clears throat> a little of a smudgy effect. So they have to be seated just nicely, you know, perpendicular, plopped right on there. And, um, and then, uh, and, and it's something you're hesitant to do. You don't want to force this tiny camera and you don't want to be jamming on these things. So you have to be, you know, even, even me, it makes me nervous as I'm plopping these onto the lens, but they do give you some great effects. Now, the last thing we did was we went ND16. Now the ND16, we were actually, dialed it down to what I hoped would be the sweet spot. So we were shooting at 4K 30, um, and at 4K 30, we wanted to have a shutter speed, it would be 60. Now, on a bright day like this, the ND16 wasn't quite enough. It was still a little bit bright, as you can see. So if you're shooting a lot of sky, you'll probably want to dial it up to at least an 80 shutter speed. But the flip side of that is take a look when I'm shooting downward. If you're shooting buildings or you're shooting landscapes, it actually will look great. In fact, it looks so great, you might even want to brighten things up a little bit in post. And also the colors really pop. You really are starting to get some of that cinema effect. Personally, for me, I don't think I'm going to go all the way up to an ND32. I think I will probably dial up my shutter slightly because ND32 is going to be too much. Um, I threw an ND16 on uh, just this last weekend at a marina and I dialed it into 80 and as you can see from this footage right here it was that was the sweet spot it, it looked really nice it's uh, the colors popped the images were really really nice but I'll tell you as soon as you got even a shade of a cloud or a tiny bit of a cloud pattern that picture became dark very very quickly so um, I can only imagine what it would be like with an ND32 especially if you've got at all variable or mixed conditions and you know the group here is based here in Seattle and we do have variable and mixed conditions. Um, so I probably won't be going for the N32. Ultimately though, those, that's what we found out. Um, and for the, uh, you know, for the Mavic Pro, it, it makes a, it really makes a big difference. It's, uh, it's, uh, it does give you that cinematic look and it takes what we consider already an incredible drone. It takes it to that next level where you're just getting truly amazing, amazing footage. And, um, and it's worth you know, the $80 investment uh, that we spent for it on B&H. So that's it. I'm Kelly Gunther, Creative Director at Gunther Group. 
Thanks for watching our blog, and we'll have more coming at you soon enough. Thanks.